My name is Sebastian and in this video I want to talk about Quarkus Panache and specifically a comparison whether to use the active record pattern or the repository pattern. So I have talked a little bit about uh, Quarkus Panache in a previous video and how to use it and why I'm a big fan of it. And if you look into it, you will see here, this is the guide for uh, Quarkus Panache. You will see that there are different uh, ways to solve um, persistence here. One is called the so-called active record pattern and the other one is called the repository pattern. In um, a previous video, I showed you the repository pattern and now I want to talk a little bit about the comparison here and what I would recommend for most of the enterprise projects. So what does all of that mean? Well, basically we, we are talking about JPA entities and the first thing to mention is that with uh, Panache, all of the Hibernate and JPA stuff that you know from the past still works. So especially if you're migrating code or if you have existing knowledge how to do things that will still work, don't worry, you don't have to use any of this. You don't have to change any of it. You can just use your code, but it might make sense to look into the Panache way of doing things. So what I have now is a project that uses, well, a coffee example. So I have my Quarkus Playground uh, project that uses Quarkus in version 3. So I'm already using the Jakarta namespace and I use these dependencies Hibernate or Panache and Quarkus JDBC for Postgres. And then what I have, I have this as a more or less plain JP entity. Here you see that I'm already using public fields, so not private and getters and setters properties, but public, which totally works. And I'm using my coffee shop class that um, does all of the coffee uh, handling methods and I inject the repository. So here quite obviously I'm using the repository approach, which is the one, well, solution number two in the guides um, that uses uh, this class Panache repository base. And basically what it does, it makes this repository available for injection here at inject and then it uses all of these methods in the repository way. Very similar to what you have done with an entity manager or if you know about Spring, what Spring Data JPA repositories can do. Okay, so that's one approach. What does it do? It includes this repository base class that is either Panache repository or Panache repository base, depending on whether you use an own ID type or if you use long as an ID. And what it does, persist, delete, find, you see it already comes with a lot of methods out of the box that you can use that are very helpful and that are even more you know, convenient than the entity manager, which by the way, you can also get, you can um, get the entity manager and then do all sorts of low level stuff, but it's very convenient to use these methods and then to query something. For example, this includes already a list all method that gives you a list back which is you know very convenient just call this method you're done and you can also invoke um, and specify this further what i did here by defining my own method that can be a domain specific methods and this makes a lot of sense for, uh, quote code quality wise that then invokes some other method inside here for example list all of the espresso coffees okay so that's quite convenient we can use this then and then say okay now i would like to um, have my application up and running and that uses this. So just to show you this real quick, I can run my application here. Quark is dev. I start up the development mode. I have a database uh, running in the background that I started uh, with a Docker container, a Postgres database. And now I can go and say, okay, curl localhost 8080 coffees is the um, endpoint. And that gives me an empty JSON array where I say, okay, please now create some coffee that is done with type is espresso or some other coffee type that then we can create and then query here accordingly and we get this back. Now this is already persisted in the database and according to this repository pattern using this code here and that works. Okay, just to show you this, to double check, I can open up um, that database connection just to say have a look at my database that is running locally and I see that I have my table here that includes one entity that I just created with the ID that is auto-generated and this type, these two fields that you saw in my JPA entity, this one. Okay, so now that's kind of cool and very helpful, but 
Now, what about this active repository or this active record pattern? So that's that where you say, okay, this works differently, where here you can see it, the class will extend panache um, entity. So with this, this is the second approach. I don't need my repository. Let's close this class and I throw it out here. But instead I say, okay, my coffee will just now extend this panache entity or panache entity base. Same difference as we had before. Um, entity, panache entity assumes that we have a long ID. Uh, it actually includes this already. Panache entity base doesn't include an ID. We can include this ourselves. So if we had panache entity, then this would be a given. We would need to remove that code and then we it's just fixed that this will be um, a long ID. I want a UID, so I use panache entity base. Okay, and that's it. Okay, now just what happened, basically what you do, this is an abstract base class that includes a lot of lot of methods. Some of them are non-static, some of them are static. So for example, I could say, well, this entity dot persist, or of course, for the more static ones where you don't have an entity yet, for example, how to look up one entity or how to query the, all the entities. It's actually very similar to what we had on the repository. In fact, the same methods, just slightly different signature. And then what I can do, I can go to my coffee shop and say, okay, now let's implement this all one by one. Um, let's start with add coffee. We basically say, okay, coffee is created. That is now just done with new coffee and then coffee dot persist. Okay, now I might say, uh, hold on a second, how does this work? Well, in a plain Java approach, this might not easily work because then persist would need obviously the connection into my enterprise code base here. It does work because of how Quarkus is being built. Quarkus does the build time optimization and then it can already replace and um, or po populate that code, what it does here internally with the correct invocation. So then this will actually work that it persists something. This works in the same way like the repository persist. It will persist that entity that then is a man managed entity. That means for us, it will have the ID present. So it will just do basically this. That should be fine. Okay, that should be sufficient. And then what we can do, let's implement the other methods. Um, again, since we don't have an entity available here, what we would need to do is to call coffee now uppercase, of course, the static method, and then say find by ID in this case, which looks a little bit weird in the beginning, but that then calls the static method and gives us hopefully that coffee. Same for um, this repository list all. We replace this with coffee list all that then does the same thing. Okay, so you saw I could remove that code. I don't need the repository. It doesn't hurt anybody if it's still there, but I of course would need it. It's basically a different approach. Okay, let's try this out. I restart my application. First of all, since that stuff is still in the database, I'm not dropping anything, it should still be there. Yes, and I can read my coffee order that I created before with a different approach. I can also order another coffee of saying, okay, I want a cappuccino, which now should also be in the database. And yes, it is. Let's try this again. Okay, it's here. Perfect, that works. So both approaches uh, work here. And as you can see, that is also a possibility. Now, what to do if I would like to have a different um, method here, similar to what we had in, uh, let's open it up again, in my repository, the list all espressos, how we would do this? Well, I can copy this code, basically put it in here, I put it down there. Now, not as a list really, but of course as a static method. Um, I mean, not as, um, as to non-static, but as a static, of course, otherwise it wouldn't work because then if I invoke it, I don't have a coffee yet. So this works in the same way. Now, of course, my uh, domain um, entity is cluttered a little bit with this code, but we'll talk about this in a second. And then I could instead invoke the return coffee um, list all espressos. Okay, and say if I update this now, now it should only give me the espresso and not the cappuccino anymore. Okay, so this works as well. Now you have quickly seen um, the comparison and especially how the active um, record uh, pattern works. Now, what about my view on that and especially my experience in projects and what I would actually recommend. And 
my point of view is quite clear i would almost always recommend to go for the repository approach you've probably already guessed it that is also the one that i showed um, in the previous video why is this the case well for a few reasons so first of all the repository approach with having this as a bean that is injectable is much closer to the usual way how we define our declarative beans in enterprise java and then inject and use them so basically i have my use case methods here in the coffee shop that is sort of the entry point for my use case handling and then if i need some lower level detail for example how to persist uh, something how to realize uh, the querying that is then done in a delegate so then i delegate this lower level details down to a different type which makes a lot of sense so usually to have this as as a type uh, that is some, uh, sometimes also called transaction script in and domain driven design i think makes a lot of sense we can separate them and of course we can then further include some other um functionality especially some domain specific one that is here really comprehensible and readable list all the espressos you know and the details is included uh, somewhere else so this makes a lot of sense to have this particular type for um, our repository uh, handling or our persistence handling so i think that is a very clean approach for the coffee active record pattern what i don't quite like is that it includes um, another abstract base class this might especially collide if you have a more sophisticated um, type hierarchy in your entities which sometimes is the case then of course all of them would need to be a panache entity or a specific one with base and then for well a more complex project this might get a little bit more tricky how to get this right because java doesn't support uh, this multi um, inheritance um, for a specific uh, one single class where I can extend from from two base classes and then also what I dis dislike a little bit more is that then especially if we have some more specific uh, methods that would be static methods here that this is sort of mixed from on the one hand what should be the plain um, domain um, perspective so the plain domain logic here in my domain entities and then also while well, this looking up logic here you might argue on the other hand okay this is already the case with our annotations but i would say this is just an annotation you know it's just the metadata that that we include there so it depends a little bit but i would say okay this for a clearer separation for that reason i like the repository approach another counter argument would be that you say well with this approach everything here is one in one class which i personally find is a very weak argument because then we could put all of our code in one code base in a single class but that would not be very good for the um, maintainability so for that particular reason i usually start with the repository approach and go with that another um, benefit of this is that it implement uh, that it includes um, itself or um, integrates itself with existing code usually slightly bit better because existing code for Hibernate and JBA, JPA or any JPA for that matter would usually be a plain JPA um, bean already without all of that uh, panache stuff and you can just straight away use it with the repository approach or even use a repository with existing code for the entity manager so you've seen this the entity manager is also available here and then we could have existing code for our existing queries and just use it right away that always works the good news is you can mix and match as much as you like so you can even define both an, um, an active record and then use a repository to manage it, it would not always make sense but you can do this so um, it is very compatible in all ways if you have existing code you can also use it with both approaches no problem so it is really up to you and it's more of an organizational question how you want to organize your code but this is my particular opinion now i'm very curious have you been using panache how you like it and especially are you using the repository pattern or are you using the active record pattern please let me know in the comments down below also, if you found this helpful, I would really appreciate a like and maybe if you check out some of my content and especially video courses uh, that I have on Quarkus, I also put the link in the description. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.